Shalom, who praises to you, Bar Sham, Yahweh Shab, Bar Sham, Har, Rakar, Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the awful elect. It's a biblical commentary on a um, Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Um, and it reads, And Yahweh Shai answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. Okay, the kingdom of heaven is basically <clears throat> the rulership of the children of Israel who are today known as so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and all of our descendants, the descendants of, of so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, or Israel, scattered all over the earth, ruling over the earth in righteousness, entering into the second covenant, where basically the <clears throat> bodies, these fleshly bodies shall be changed into... Um, their flesh, their stony hearts shall be turned into fleshly ones, and whereby there will be extraterrestrial as opposed to terrestrial, having ruled by the spirit as opposed to having ruled by the flesh. Okay, so this kingdom presently is on earth and it's suffering violence, okay, as the scriptures say. And um, where, as a prophet of Yahweh Bar Sham, Yahweh Shai Bar Sham, Kadash, we are prophesying the downfall of this kingdom because we're. Uh, we're coming in the, in, the, in the spirit of prophecy, all right, all right, making um, the Lord's name a praise upon the earth. We're basically here to um, set up the kingdom, all right, upon the upon the earth, and that, and that's the prayer that we pray daily, all right, through the spirit and power of Yah, Bar Shem Yah Shai, Bar Shem Har Rakar Kadash. So that's the kingdom of heaven, all right. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Okay, and we can understand that the certain king is the most high Yahweh and the marriage is the basically um is known as a coronation cor coronation of um the children of Israel being married who are likened unto a woman, a, a fine, beautiful woman, a um a fair woman, being married unto the son Yahweh Shai, which is the son of the most high power Yahweh, who's made in his express image. Okay, and by being married unto him, that allows us to be joint heirs and to participate in his blessing. Okay, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Now the servants that were bidden were who? The prophets. I mean, servants that went out were the prophets, going out on the highways and byways. <coughs> and again, so lucky again, sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. So the farmers went about farming, and the merchants went about um, buying merchandise. And that's, that's, they basically made light of the Lord. They, they, they took their worldly duties um, more seriously than the Lord bidding them to the marriage. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So you had people that didn't like the words that were being said about the, the as it tells you in Jeremiah 28 and 8, the prophets that had been before me, the prophets of old prophesied both against many nations and kingdoms of um, war, evil and pestilence. So when it, the prophets come forth, more time, people ain't gonna like what they're hearing because the prophets are prophesying against the kingdom. The only ones that are going to like what they hear is the ones that come in the spirit of Ezekiel 9 and 4. Say a mark upon the, the men that sign cry for all the abominations but that be done in the midst of. So if you ain't signing and crying, then you ain't really going to be, um, you know, you ain't going to be happy when you hear the prophet's message. And that's why it says this, and the remnant took his servants and treated them spitefully. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that slewest the prophets and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was rough and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their sea. So they got taken out, okay? And that, that's what's going to happen in these last days. Anyone that's against the word of the Lord, man, it'd be better that a, a millstone um, was hung, hung about their neck and, and you know, they'll, they'll perish in the sea, basically. Then say if he to his service, wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. 
And that's what we're doing presently in this, these last days. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. So presently, many are called, but few are chosen. So within the midst of our, our, our <coughs> in the in the wedding chamber, the mar- you know the, the marriage chambers, there's good and bad, but they're gonna be cast out before the time of the marriage. And when the king came to see in to see the guests he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment okay and and he said unto him friend how camest thou heather in heather not having a wedding garment and he was speechless then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into our darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth Okay, for many are called, but few are chosen. See, so the wedding garment represents um, the righteousness of the saints. Basically, the, the garment, the the clothing, is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay, that's the that's our righteousness, having this knowledge, the ability to to take it in. Um, that is our covering. Okay, that stops us from being naked, and in that day when it comes, that's basically a mark of exemption for all this destruction okay so that's why <clears throat> it's important to get this wisdom knowledge and understanding man then went the pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk and they sent out unto him their disciples with the herodians saying master we know that thou art true and teach us the way of the most high and truth neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of the person of men. Tell us therefore what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Yahushai perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And he brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and, and the superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto Yahweh the things that are Yahweh's. So basically, what the Lord is showing there is that, look, the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Esau has his rulership at this time. These things that pertain unto Esau, they, they're for Esau. One good thing, one it's not necessarily good, but one, one good example that shows that same... Um, blessing that same um, that same point is basically Esau's blessing of the sword okay Jake there's no way Jacob picking up that sword and that blessing is falling right with him man you pick up that sword you don't have the same spirit on you whereby when when those two things a sword and a Jake come together that is going to have the same effect as Esau because that is his blessing as it tells you in Genesis the 27th chapter so there's no way of getting around it all right these, that's why we have to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar. That's why we're paying taxes, man. That's why these are things that are written being subject unto the payments. That's just where it is, all right? And then when we get into the kingdom and rule in, in, in the utmost righteousness, that's just where it is because that is the truth of the mouth. The most high decreed it and that's how it's going to be, all right? So that's why it says unto the most high the things that are the most high, all right? And what, what's, what's one of the main things that's unto the most high? Us. The Israelites, it tells you that in Exodus 19 and 5 and 6, it tells you that if you follow my word, if you shall follow my words, you shall become a peculiar treasure. Okay? And that's why we have to, you know, as being subject unto the most high power through the first co- covenant or, you know, with grace now, that we have to present our bodies a living sacrifice and we have to work, okay, to be to, to for salvation basically. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master M- Moses said, If any man having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, de- now there <coughs> were with us seven brethren, and the first. We then married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife 
unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, on the, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. All right? So that was their question. They were trying to catch Yahushai. Yahushai answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Yahweh. All right? Because they lack faith. For in the resurre resurrection, they, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of the Most High in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not heard, read that which was spoken unto you by the Most High, saying, I am the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. The power, the Most High is not the power of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had, had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were, get, they were gathered together. And mind you, these two did not get along. Okay? And I showed you how much how vehemently these different um, pe um, different sects were against Yahweh Shai, well, Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Shai, man, the word, all right, that they would come together just to, to get one over him. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is, a, is the great commandment in the law? <coughs> if you know anything about a lawyer, the word lawyer goes back to the word Levi, in the Lashon Kodash lawyer, which is basically which um, the law part is basically a shortening of Lawa, which means join, and the Ya means join uh, me. So you know, you put the two together, it basically means join unto me. And what made the the, the Levites join unto the Most High? Well, really, through the, the the going into the history is when they basically weren't. They were the only tribe that basically didn't go against the Most High. They, they stood stern with the Most High. I can't remember the story off the top of my head. But, that, you know, they showed themselves righteous in that out of all the tribes. And then the priesthood got passed on to them. Okay? Whereas where it was meant to be that the, the firstborn son of every, of every family would be the priest unto the Most High. Okay? Which really goes back to the first fruits of um, Yahweh Shai because they're the you know the first fruits the elect that are made really are the priests and kings of the nation of israel okay the the, the elders of the nation of israel all right um so it says um master which is a great is the great commandment in the law and i wish i said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind now this is the greatest law that the fact that you have to love the most high power yahweh with all your heart, basically being all your mind and your spirit, man. Okay? Now, love love work if no ill to his neighbor. Okay? And in loving someone, really, there's a fear there. And really, the fear, if you've lo ever loved anyone before, there's a fear of losing that somebody. So the, the fear is, is really, as it tells you in the scriptures, the fear is the beginning of, of um, you know, um, the beginning of um, of understanding. So the fear is really what drives you to love um, the most high power with all your heart, man. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? So that shows you there's... Listen, self-love is important. If you can't... If you can't... <laughs> this sounds... Even the last statement I said kind of sounds kind of lovey-dovey. But it's, it's real rap. All right. If you can't love yourself, how on earth are you gonna be able to love anyone else, man? If you got if you got personal issues and shit, you need to get them in order before you can actually, you know, then you know put that energy out onto somebody else. All right. So there's a righteous form of self love and there's a wicked form of self love where you're putting where you're basically that's that's what brings about covetousness and all of the the different. Laws of the Ten Commandments that follow after these two great, great commandments, they're basically down to the fact that it's like a um, a self love in in wickedness, but there's a self love in righteousness, whereby you care for your spirit and soul and your body that the Most High gave you to do right by it. Okay, 
And then by doing that right by yourself, you want the right to be done by somebody else. Now, if you understand the family structure, there's a saying that, it's, that says um, it takes a, fat, a village to raise a, a child because that environment and the people within that environment basically have an effect on how that child is, grows, man. A good example of that is a movie, um, A Bronx Tale, man, with, um, I forgot this guy's name, man, the, the, but I know Robert De Niro's in it, but the other guy as well, where they're basically going against each other, man, over C. I can't remember his, his Italian name, but basically his dad just wants him to be a regular kid, but the guy on the top, top guy on the, on the, on the, on the, in, his, in his area, in his community, takes a liking to him because of his, his principles or his morals, should I say, in terms of not being a liar and, and keeping his mouth shut and all that type of stuff takes a liking to him so he's torn between the two the two of their guidance now if the whole unit is working with one mindset then everything will then one then there'll be no misunderstanding how can two walk together at least they be agreed so that's why the love of yourself is important um for you to love your neighbor as such because even then you see your neighbor going up going off you're gonna stop him and make him know but then you know that if that guy can't get, you know that you have to kill him for the bettering of your whole neighborhood, okay? According to the scriptures, of course. <laughs> and, I ain't, and I ain't saying I'm going to do that today. I'm just saying that that's how the Lord, that's how the Most High set it up. And we're presently in his kingdom um, under the prophecy of Job 9 and 24, where it says, The spirit the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And this is for us to learn wickedness, man, to see the effect of. When you don't follow these law, statutes, or commandments, what type of confusion seeps all over the earth? All right. So, um, reading on, it says, on the, verse forty, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahushai asked them, saying, "What think ye of Yahushai? Whose son is he? <coughs> of Hamashiach? Whose son is he?" They say unto him, the son of David. He saith unto them, How do how then doth David in spirit call the Lord, call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Yahweh Shai is a bad man in them scriptures, man. <laughs> Don't play. And he gave us that same spirit, man. And that's why I started with the apostles of Great Millstone. There ain't no confounding, man. You guys ain't got it. If you, if you want the truth, you got to really get 100% raw, undiluted from the apostles of Great Millstone, man. Okay, you other guys have got it right in terms of, you know, the basics, the skeleton of it. But you ain't got the, the, the full breath and the flesh, man. You ain't got it all, man. So with that, man, I pray you edified. Shalom.